So first things first, strategic marketing planning tools for left brain thinkers. We surveyed at Big Buzz, we uh, gather industry intel in the senior living uh, marketing industry um, to really what, uncover what works best across the board. And so one of the studies that we did just last year was to uncover what works best specifically in marketing planning and why. So remember that your left brain integrators are the ones who are going to be best at marketing planning. If you are a um, left brain integrator, these are tools for you. Um, and if you have on your list other left brain integrators who you work with, these are tools for them. Uh, I mentioned the difference between tactical or strategic marketing plan. Think for a moment, I'm just gonna be quiet here for a moment and have you take this in. And I want, to, I want for you to ask, do you have a strategic marketing plan as is laid out on the left-hand side or a tactical plan? And again, I'm going to ask for two volunteers and uh, I will outweigh you. So do participate. I just find that there's, it's much more enriching if we have more of a conversation than just me lecturing at you. So do you have more of a strategic marketing plan that is probably driven by a left brain integrator or more of a tactical plan that is right brain visionary? And I want to clarify here, there's no good or bad or right or wrong you need both at different times. So there's no wrong answer to this. Ah, and I'm just seeing from James, his CEO is right brain squirrel. It's very adequate, very adequate explanation. Um, and that is exactly why we have to pair our right brainers with our left brainers because the right brainer goes, I have an idea. And the left brainer goes, I check the plan and it's not in the plan. And so we will table it and see if it fits into the plan next quarter or next year, but there's data to support that decision. And then you say, uh, your sales guy is left brain, very analytical. A lot of sales folks are, and that's what makes them really good at sales that they keep you know, track of all of those leads and you know, who's a, a marketing qualified lead, who's a sales qualified lead, who's actually you know, in what stage of the conversation. Thank you, James. All right, uh, two volunteers who, who relates more to right now we're working off of a strategic marketing plan? So we definitely have a marketing plan and it seems to have components from strategic and tactical both. That is pretty typical. Do, can, does your team, and I'm sorry, I can't see who's talking. Will you tell me your first name? Marty Stewart. Marty, thank you. Marty, um, can you and your team decipher which parts of the plan are strategic and which are tactical, or are they all sort of blended? Uh, it's it's a long marketing plan, many pages, and yeah. so it's kind of blended. Yeah. Yeah, um, we. I'm sure that yours is not this long, but we once worked with an organization that had seven different, seven hundred part marketing plans, <laughs> and so that's a really long marketing plan. Um, we're going to talk about getting it down to a one page plan that will show which parts are strategic and which parts are tactical. And that will help um, when put into practice, that helps to orient you as the leader into, you know, who should really be in charge of the strategic pieces, because that's your, those are your left brain thinkers. And who should really be spearheading the tactical plan? Those are the ones who are like, just go create this, go write this, go design this, go you know, start this ad campaign, start this email automation. Those are your right brains. Thank you, Marty. Another volunteer, how, how would you describe your marketing plan? One more. I know y'all all have marketing plans because you came to my seminar. <laughs> One more volunteer. Does anyone have strictly a tactical plan? Which again, not a good or better, right or wrong, but is there anyone here who has, and we see this very often in the industry, anyone who just has a tactical plan? Well, this is good news. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so in most cases, uh, to Marty's example, um, the plan is integrated. And, and um, in most scenarios that we saw in our research, 
that most are not delineated. So I'll show you that one page solution to delineating what's strategic and what's tactical. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because it's your handout, but uh, you'll, you'll have received a digital version of this little pamphlet. And um, there is a section in here about the strategic planning models uh, right here on page nine. And um, it gives more information into the data that we collected around what makes a strong marketing plan in senior living. So do pull that, um, pull that handout up. It's only available when we lecture. So you'll want to make sure to reference that. But in essence, a marketing plan that works extraordinarily well in this industry has one goal, two at most. Whenever I share this with client um, organizations, I always get, but can't we have three or four? The, the fact is that human beings can really only focus on one or two things maximum at one time. So very often in these more complicated marketing plans, CEOs in particular, because they can be, you know, right brain thinkers and lots of ideas of how, you know, all the goals, um, it works best when, when that thinker is coupled with a left brain thinker who says, what are the two that when we reach them will make all the difference? So Sean Covey writes about this in the four disciplines of execution, because failure to achieve just these two renders all efforts inconsequential. So you can run all the marketing in the world, but if it didn't reach this one or two set of most important goals, then you'll know then you have that you ha are not making <clears throat> traction towards uh, the, the end game. I will share an example of this. Um, <laughs> I, I reference here again this the seven page strategic plan or the 700 seven parts 700 parts each plan um, in favor of just one 15 word big important goal. So Brene Brown writes clear is kind. Folks can get behind a goal that they fully understand. In a perfect world, you want the entire team from CEO to executive director level to care level at all levels of the organization, knowing the goal, being able to say it right off, right off the bat in 15 words or less, because then they can get behind it and they can, they can behave day to day towards that goal. The goal should be documented. It can only be followed by all if it's documented and regularly reviewed. Um, when I first started my career, this sort of confounded me because I thought, wouldn't it be boring to just like go over and over and over a goal? And very early in my career, I learned that in marketing and advertising and, and marketing includes internal marketing, right? You are marketing to the people who work for you in your organization to get them on board for reaching organizational goals and for you know, pushing brand amplification out. When you have one goal that's documented, regular review can just look like in the monthly all team huddle or the quarterly all team huddle, you ask someone to please read the goal or in um, at the community level in the weekly all hands meeting, have one person read the goal and then have another person like invite somebody else to please share about how another team member took it upon themselves to take bold action to achieve it. Then it becomes a living document. It's not just shelved on you know markers uh, um, in a marker's office uh, collecting dust. And then it's high level, the uh, uh, um, strong strategic marketing plan focuses on revenue or profit growth. So our formula at Big Buzz for developing your big important goal is this, increase, fill in the blank, and, and think about this, write, write this down. So, and I'll do it with you. So our big for this year, increase. And after increase, write down, do you wanna increase awareness? Do you wanna increase the number of leads you already have, but you want to nurture them to become more intentional about moving in? Or do you want to increase intent marketing? In other words, you've already nurtured a whole bunch of leads and you just really need to ask them at this point to review an agreement and move in. In, 
85% of cases um, that we have researched, uh, organizations need the most help, unless it's a startup organization, uh, senior, senior care organizations need most support with nurture marketing. So in this case, I'm going to write increase nurture marketing in order to increase. And then you pick, is your CEO, COO about increasing revenue, increasing profit? And, and here's the trick. We say this all the time. Our clients will come to us and say, well, we want to increase occupancy. If you have this very sophisticated marketing team with terrific right brain thinkers and terrific left brain thinkers, working in tandem, totally aligned on this goal and moving things forward. And all we do together in a year's time is increase census. I think that I, I, I have a hunch that your CEO or COO might be disappointed in that. The question really to, to um, align on in that big picture collective marketing team is, do we want to increase revenue? In other words, are we scaling, buying more, more communities? Are we in growth mode? Or do we want to increase profit? Are we in um, uh, stability, stabilizing mode? We have, we have reached a growth um, plateau on purpose. We have acquired the, the communities that we want to acquire. And now we are um, increasing profit in, in an effort to pay off investors. In most of the scenarios where we work, it's increased revenue. So in order to increase revenue from and then, you know, working with the executive team to quantify that from X to Y by month, day, year, some date within the next three years. That is a clear, kind, high level, one goal that can be a mantra for everybody, top, top down in the organization. This is what we're doing. Um, so how do you fuel that marketing plan? How do you know what to put in the marketing plan? Um, many, many senior living care organizations base their marketing planning on CSAT uh, scores and <clears throat> survey results, which is good. That's okay. And what we would like to recommend is that you also use voice of the customer data taking a pool of the residents and family members who you most want to replicate and surveying or interviewing them about what they love most about you. That is what, that's that marketing gold that when you amplify that message, it transcends mission vision values. It transcends your CSAT, you know, some testimonials that you got from, from CSAT uh, scores. Voice of the customer data is marketing gold where people light up and share these full stories of transformation. Um, about how you made life better. And your right brain thinkers can make a lot of that data in terms of making the marketing come to life. Your left brain thinkers, I would advise them to use programmatic surveys, um, artificial intelligence that, that um, support you in um, identifying a certain uh, demographic of person in your larger area, would be residents or family members in your area. And, and find out exactly how they're finding organizations like yours. Ideally, your marketing planning is backed by all of this data. Your, most of your competitors are basing it on mission, vision, values, and, and CSAT scores. So just by virtue of adding voice of the customer data and prog programmatic survey data, you are really upping your game in marketing planning. Uh, in terms of the top initiatives found in senior living marketing plans, these are just industry trends. I do not recommend that you change your marketing plan based upon industry trends. It's more important that you're running uh, the right surveys, these right surveys for your organization to get the right data for you, but just to see where you benchmark in terms of the industry. Um, social media marketing and social media advertising come in at 50 and 42%. Referral marketing comes in at 39%. And I want to be very, very clear that this is not marketing associated with referral agencies. This is stoking and training the team to regularly invite referrals as part of the conversation that they have every day. 34% uh, of your peers are making the most of email marketing and um, email automation. 28% uh, are using digital and display advertising. 
tw another 28, 29% are using content marketing. 20, my, my lines are a little off here. Uh, or I might need my readers. 27% um, are using print and traditional marketing. Um, and, you can, and you can kind of scan down from there. Um, what's interesting about this to me is that we always say at Big Buzz that, that what folks are really buying is a relationship with you all, right? And all four of the top contenders in this industry benchmarking, social media, social media, referral marketing, email marketing, are about building relationships. You can think of brand marketing as getting into the relationship before the relationship begins. Your content marketing is um, having a conversation before the conversation begins. So by the time your phone rings, folks feel familiar with you. They feel like they might know you. They feel like they might trust you. I'll talk more about this in the right brain side in our second module. And then KPIs, um, your left brain thinkers are going to be really heavy on the KPIs, but remember that they're reporting KPIs to folks that are not left brain thinkers. So it is very important to train your left brain integrators, um, certainly to look at all of these scoreboard um, metrics um, and the, some other ones may be pertinent to you. And some of these would not, might not be pertinent to you, but they may look at it every week. And then our recommendation is that they work with the executive team with the right brain thinkers to whom they need to report on identifying the top three to five that are most important to that right brain thinker. Because if you put all of these metrics in front of a right brain thinker, they just go, is it working or is it not working? Tell me, tell, or worst case scenario, they start making it mean something it doesn't and they start worrying. So uh, your left brain thinkers will want to measure all of this, and then they need to be trained to report on a finite number to the right brain thinkers that they report to. The one page marketing plan looks like this at the top, and I'm just going to move my little Zoom um, heads down here so that I can read this. At the top, we have a big important goal. We will increase awareness marketing in order to increase revenue from X million to Y million by December 31st, 2023. This is an actual marketing plan that uh, we developed for a client that took out the numbers, of course, but you can see where there are really just four parts to this plan. There's the big important goal at the top, then there are objectives, strategies, and measures. Objectives are destinations that the organization wants to reach that they have not yet reached. So it's the map. This is where we're going. We, we are going to become the preferred holistic Christian senior care provider. We are the trusted authority on, in, on investing in senior care, in other words, uh, private pay. And we have strong internal sales and marketing systems to support sustainable growth. <coughs> when you work your right brain and left brain thinkers together, when you align them on the objectives, where we're going, how, like, what are our destinations, then it becomes the litmus test for all of the strategies. Strategies are high level actions that your team can take in order to reach the objectives. Strategies are not tactics. So um, I, I had a um, consultant say to me one time, your pencil is not a strategy. <laughs> um, SEO is not a strategy, not by itself. Um, building out a website is not a strategy. Those are tactics and they are part of strategy. They, they funnel up to strategy, but first you have to ask if these are the three places we wanna go, what action do we need to take this quarter in order to get there by then, by December 31st of this year? Here are the strategies. So conduct voice of the customer surveys, use that survey data to develop the key messaging visuals and direction, apply differentiating messaging consistently across marketing channels, right? Not tactics. It, it's good. It, strategies involve research, involve critical thinking, involve um, group work, um, and are usually done over the course of a, at least a quarter, 90 day stand, um, time frame. Uh, for the second one, we're gonna the the action we're gonna take is evolve sales messaging, uh, build and deploy a social media strategy. So not post on social media, but we're gonna actually think through 
what has worked in the past, what are we getting great engagement on, how many people do we have following us so far, <laughs> who are our thought leaders within the company, and then how do we strengthen all of that. That's strategy. Refining of all the, the content marketing strategy, again, looking at what's worked, maybe running some more um, research and diagnostics, and then launch a public relations awards campaigns and review program. And then for the third destination, what action needs to be taken this quarter to make that happen? Process map internal sales and marketing processes, apply the functional marketing team model, automate content marketing campaigns. There's usually three to five strategies for every objective each quarter. And then at quarter by quarter, as these are completed, then there's a quarterly pulse meeting where your right brain thinkers, left brain thinkers come together and say, and now what action do we need to take now that it's a new quarter and we finish that action? And then your left brain thinkers will be very happy to apply measures to these strategies or to reaching the objectives. And that is where your occupancy goal lives as a measure to a particular strategy or objective, but it is not the big important goal. Um, increasing buy-in rate is a great measure. Increasing uh, sales qualified leads from X to Y by a certain date is a great measure. All right, so uh, I'll just give you a minute on the clock here to write down one to three actions your team can take to improve results from your organization's marketing planning efforts. And while you do that, I'm also going to give you the opportunity to um, scan or um, go to bigbuzzinc.com WHCA 2023 and download. This is the, you'll get access to our entire um, library of ebooks. The ebook that we published last year that has all of the research and data on the section that I just covered is the one with the light bulb on the lower left-hand corner, a focus on strategic marketing planning for senior living. So you can access that at this link. 